Hello again, this is Ryan with BetterTattooing.com. Today we're going to be talking about being afraid of water. Okay, now that that's over with, hydrophobic substances are things that repel water. When you think about oil, when you pour it into a boiling pot of water to make your favorite craft dinner or craft macaroni and cheese for my friends in North America, it just stays at the top. If you don't add oil to your craft Mac when you're boiling it, dude, you just please just don't just just start doing it. That's just horrible. Salt it too, okay? Anyways, why is hydrophobic substances important, or why are they important in tattooing? Well, hydrophobic su substances are going to repel things that are water right. So if we use something like pigment in our tattoos, pigment is water based. Yay. How many of you out there, newbies or old people alike, have been running a line and all of a sudden your area just starts looking like a murder scene? Black, red, whatever type of pigment that you're using, yellows, greens, it becomes so occluded, so messy, you can't see exactly what's going on. You got to take out your squirt bottle, you got a, or a rinse cup, however you want to dip and wipe your shit. You got to clean off the area to keep working. Now, if you're working with a stencil that's super complex, the more you wipe, the more likely you are to wipe off the stencil. So it's bad. So how do we avoid that? We use hydrophobic substances to block that pigment from sticking on the skin. Most commonly things uh, I see that are being used inside of the industry are A&D ointments or Vaseline. Why do we do those two things? Well, there used to be this thing about like it helps lubricate the skin and helps the needles go, you know, to the area and spot where they need to, which I don't know if that's right or not. I don't have any data about that. But I do know that A and D and Vaseline create a hydrophobic barrier on the skin where the pigment won't come into contact with it. It just sits on top. It's really cool. The thinner your layer and the more consistent that it is, the more effective it is at just keeping that small bead in front of your needles, which that's a big fucking bead if you tattoo like that, that's awful, don't do that. As a keep a small bead in front of it so that it's easily available to the needles to be implanted into the top layer of your dermis. If you don't use a and or Vaseline, you use another product. I know people use coconut oil derivatives or other vegetable oils. It's fine, it's still hydrophobic, okay? It doesn't mean that it's, oh, it's, it's not the same because it's not a petroleum-based product. No, shut up. Anything that repels water, natural or otherwise, is hydrophobic. And for any trolls out there that want to get into semantics, suck it. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's hydrophobic. It blocks stuff. So, if you're not using this stuff with your tattoos, you should probably start. Thin layer. Normally what I like to do to keep it nice and warm is, if I've got my tattoo hand here, and I'm, you know, stretching and doing my lines or whatever, I'll keep a little dab on the back of my hand here. Keeps it nice and warm. It's almost like a painter's palette. Peel off just a little bit, pull it down the back of my gloved hand, use nitrile, don't use some goddamn latex gloves, and just, you know, wipe it here, place it on the tattoo where you want to work, stretch that skin, get that three or four point stretch, and then just start running your lines. You're using this stuff right, it'll help up your game. Thanks.